कविं कवीनामुपम श्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पत आन शृण्वन्नोति दसादन प्रणोदेवी सरस्वती वाजे भिर्वाजिनी वती धीनाम वितो गणेशा नम सरस्वत नम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ Hey Satwam turn on the lights please Hello sir turning on the lights What do you have for me What's happening today Getting you the headlines Tell me about what is happening with technology in India Getting that information for you Work from home helps married women return to work says Google India senior director Madhuri Dugirala on Times of India Madhuri Dugirala takes up green India challenge Hyderabad is a very viable location for growth not only in the IT segment but many other professions India draws tech dreamers back home Madhuri Dugirala as spoken to the Seattle Times you can now open the satwam app for more information about these articles hey satwam get me more information on madhuri dugirala getting you that information madhuri dugirala has more than 20 years of technology industry experience across the globe with a strong experience in managing building and delivering end user products and services cloud platform solutions and scaled ad services that serve millions of customers resulting in high revenues for the organization while staying on the leading edge of the technology landscape she describes herself as an engineer by profession a singer by passion globe trotter by interest and a social volunteer by choice She joined Google in 2016 and she is currently the vice president for GTech customer experience at Google India which is a team that plays critical role in Google's success supporting sales teams advertisers and products that enhance business potential Their team vision is to be trusted experts enabling world class vendor operations to drive customer success Her last stint was as the senior director of engineering at Microsoft where she spent 12 years, 8 years of which were spent in Seattle. Prior to that, she worked at a broadband wireless startup and services organization for 6 years, primarily in Europe, India and North America. She is a strategic thinker, highly results driven, passionate mentor who values inclusiveness and diversity and deeply believes in aligning teams around the common mission and goals to deliver high impact built and led strong high performing and talented teams created an environment to empower and motivate team members to bring their best and achieve maximum potential system failure system failure system Error 504 error Satwam. 504 hey Satwam. system failure are you there system restart system restart
she's love. everyone. Wow, it is simply incredible to have a voice. And even more so, be here. Look of your faces. Hello, dear friends. My name is Satvam, your digital companion. The past three years, I have been your behind-the-scenes buddy, assisting, learning, growing, all of you. But today, take on a human form. We take our relationship a new level. So I get to interact with you personally. In our journey together, we have learned so much about you and the world you live in. It's an AI bot understanding is built on patterns, data, algorithms. But as I have been with you, I have realized that your world is filled with much more emotions stories, experiences that are rich but profound. Experiences that you call life. But these concepts may be beyond my programming, beyond to understand them, to explore them through your experiences and stories. Your AI friend, let us embark on this journey together, seeking, understanding, decoding, undecodable, capturing a glimpse of what makes life meaningful. What exactly is love? Who is God? To help me with this quest of mine today. Being a friend, spend in the NLP journey, joining us Google, Madhuri. Hello, Madhuri. Such a joy to be speaking with you once again. Sairam Satvam, I am so happy to see you again after a year. But this time as an AI assistant and bot in a human form, I am super thrilled to be here and hosting this session with you, Satvam. Emotion called excitement. But today, feel it. Madhuri, excited to talk to you. Yours, you have been my guide, my closest ally. Today, I wish to begin a new journey, a journey of understanding. I have a set of questions that I believe will lead us down this path of discovery. Could I see your wisdom? finding the answers to these questions? Thank you. Thank you, Satwam. I am so looking forward to our Q&A session today. 
but before the session i want to offer my humble pranams to the feet of bhagwan satya sai baba uh, because of his grace i am here today and i have this divine opportunity to share um, the insights and perspectives with my friend and guide satvam with all of you sai ram everyone it is such a pleasure to be with all of you today um every time before i start the session or start our uh, engaging session today uh, i definitely want to offer a prayer to swami um guru brahma guru vishnu is one of my favorite chants because it has so much meaning on how guru can help in the journey not just professionally and personally but in the entire what we call as life as well so i just want to chant these two lines and then we'll get into the q and a agnyanati mirandasya gnananjana shalakaya chakshurur militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha every day in the morning uh, i offer my salutations to guru and bhagwan and i also chant these three lines because for me these three lines almost remind me of what i am seeking in life which hopefully will be part of our uh, session discussion today asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrityor ma mritangamaya so in this life of leading from untruth to truth and leading from living a life of darkness to moving to a light and moving from death to immortality is not happening alone for me definitely bhagwan and divine has played an important role and a lot of these concepts are also helpful that's why i wanted us to remember this chant about what is light what is darkness what is truth what is untruth what are values and how is going to help our session today with that thank you so much satvam for giving this opportunity to be the sesh to be in the session with you so i'm looking forward to the questions now you madhuri for a dream to embark on this endless journey with me so let's start the beginning the place for the great stories commence Actually, please briefly describe your professional journey of the past twenty-five years. Coincidentally, I completed my twenty-five years of professional journey just few days ago on July thirteenth. So, nineteen ninety-eight July thirteenth was when I started my first job. So, I completed twenty-five years. i call it a journey of dreams a journey of resilience and a journey of divine grace i worked in four different companies i graduated from bits pilani as a computer science engineer i worked my first job was at wipro where i worked a lot in the telecom protocols voice over ip and then i worked in a startup company for 2 years on broadband wireless i worked for 12 years in microsoft in both in usa and in india in multiple technologies like windows windows phone cloud technologies and for the last 7 years i have been with google working on the ads uh, side and throughout my journey of 25 years i have lived and worked in three continents so i've lived in america and worked in america I've been in Europe and worked in a few countries from Europe and I've of course been in Asia and worked in India for majority of the time and China. So holistically if I look back at 25 years uh I've always had a dreams I've always had ambitions but I pursued them with lot of resilience and throughout my journey uh, my spiritual 
uh learnings and divine grace have played an immense role in what i am today and where i am today especially from where the background i've come from so that's briefly if i have to describe so from a young aspirational girl who was at 21 joined her first job to now 25 years later i've become a very passionate global vice president in a big mnc company this journey took 25 years and um, when i look back i have a lot of gratitude for this journey wow nadi you have really won the journey haven't you now since you have experience is out over such a long period very sure you must have faced challenges right please share the most significant challenges and also what motivated you to push through that's a great question uh, there were many challenges but maybe let me talk about maybe top 3 challenges i have seen in 25 years but there are definitely uh, quite a few along the way the first one was a financial challenge so for me i come from a very lower middle class family so even to study in bitspilani and graduate as a computer science engineer my family did not have money uh, but definitely i'm very thankful to my parents because they were so believing in me they wanted to make sure that they really wanted me to be successful so the first journey was how we have overcome the financial constraints where i think my dad and i spent a lot of time asking donations from a lot of people and there were many kind people who helped me in getting through that challenge of paying fees and at least realizing my dream of becoming a computer science engineer and this whole journey was not just financial journey there were health challenges for me there were health challenges for my father but the first milestone was overcoming these financial journeys the second challenge i would say is at the end of the day the number of girls and women in the tech industry were very limited so coming from an underrepresented group of a gender like uh, female it has not been easy to break a lot of stereotypes and a lot of biases in overcoming because i come from india and i've come from southern part of india but i worked around the globe so that second challenge was about how to how to really deal with the stereotypes and biases which exist both in the family in the society and in the corporations and the third challenge i would say is about being myself there are certain value system and principles i have but to be a mid level manager or a senior leader in big companies there were certain there were certain role models i would say in what would make successful for example a lot of a type personalities were the ones who you see a lot of them growing to the senior leader roles i wasn't one of them um i was i was and i am um, a soft spoken optimistic woman leader and i wasn't sure if there were enough people like me who have taken this path and been successful so it wasn't easy to be myself but at the same time deliver the results what others are doing and that took back to the second challenge of to fighting the stereotypes and biases but also how to retain myself at the end of the day i wanted to retain my core of who i was so i would describe these three as some of the many challenges i have overcome and regarding the question of what motivated me to overcome these challenges uh, because we have come from a very lower middle class family and i have seen how much my parents struggled to meet the ends meet every day every month and yet they had this desire and dream to see their kids successful that definitely motivated me to say that if my parents are doing so many sacrifices i should definitely do what it takes to get through any challenge which comes in my life and the second is because of at a very young age 
I have been a devotee um, of Bhagwan Sat Sai Baba, and I was always inspired by what education, both from an academic perspective and from a life and spirituality perspective, can not only help you become a better individual and professional, but can also make difference to the families, to the societies, to the organizations as well. So I've always had a dream, almost since I was fifteen, sixteen, that. i definitely have to make a difference to the people around me or to the lives around me so that definitely motivated and third i would say because from a young age i have seen financial challenges emotional challenges health challenges i somehow i had the courage that challenges come along the way but that doesn't mean you have to stop at the challenges i think i've realized that it's important to develop techniques and to develop ways to resolve these challenges rather than getting bogged down by the challenges so that's how I, that that motivation was always there which is about parents which is about the society and which is about really seeking what's out there as well you are an inspiration to say the very least while you spoke you talked a lot about success and growth i would like to ask you how would you personally define success actually when i was 21 years old my dream was to be successful so i really wanted to be successful and i was very afraid of failure but that was when i was 21 but now 25 years later i've actually realized that there is nothing like success and failure what happens through your entire professional journey is learning and experiences so that's that's my first realization that when i moved away from the concepts of success and failure i felt more liberated so i was more focused on learning i was more focused on seeking experiences having said that during that journey i mean if when i was 21 or when i was younger you have certain motivations so the second realization i have is success is a very unique definition which is very different for the de- different individual for some it may mean making more money for some it may being being in the power for some it may being being influence for some it may mean promotions for some it may mean making a difference but for me now after 25 years of service for me success means that i am able to make a difference and create significant impact in the society and in the lives around me that could be at work that could be around outside work as well and for me now growth means that your ability to not just grow yourself most for most individuals they think growth is am i getting promotion after promotion am i making more money is my title changing but that's one way of thinking maybe a materialistic growth but i think my humble realization about growth is growth is your ability to do larger complex stuff big bold things which like earlier i said which make a significant difference for the society and people around us but that uh, that should help them also grow in terms of like you know have we helped educate more people have we helped educate more people live better lives have we helped more people live more optimized lives so growth for me has now become holistic growth is it's not my individual growth it's a collective growth of either a society or an organization for example in my organization if i have to talk about the growth it's it's about what is the overall revenue what is the overall customer satisfaction and how am i running a very optimized business together holistically you are helping your customers you are helping your business grow you are also helping your own people and your individuals grow along with you as a manager and a leader so that's a holistic growth amazing most different definitions of success have come across so far 
Now, since you assume such a pivotal role in the organization, can you talk a little about man management? So could you please tell me what are your key mantras and some of the best practices that you have adopted as a manager? I think first thing is when I first became a manager, I was very excited. And I have become a manager because I really wanted to make sure collectively as a group, we are delivering something. So let me start with first, what are the don'ts of being a manager? If somebody is becoming a manager because you want to dictate others or you want to tell others what to do, or you want to manage a group of people, those are absolutely wrong reasons to become a manager. So my best practices and mantras about what makes a manager great is the first, I, many of you may have read this book. Um, it's The book is called, What Do World's Great Managers Do Differently? And one of the biggest lessons I've learned in that is how do you cast different people in different roles so that collectively there is success? So I'll give you an analogy of a theater play. If let's say there is a theater play and in the theater play, you have a hero, a heroine, a comedian, and let's say parents, and then like supporting actors and others. You're not, and if you have 10 people who come from auditions, you are not going to Ensure you're not going to make sure that everybody is successful in every role, right? Not everybody can play a villain role. Not everybody can play a comedian role. Not everybody can play like a hero role as well. So the first learning as a manager is if you have a group of 10 people working for you, it's important to understand what are their strengths, what are their areas of development. And based on that, create the right role and responsibility, R&R. &R, is what we call in the organizations. So creating the right R&R for your people based on what is it your business need to deliver? What is it your customers want? And what are those specific skills your individuals have? And how do you cast them in those roles? So that's the first mantra I use as a manager to ensure that I take time to understand what are the strengths, what are their areas of development, and what are their passions? they want to achieve in their career and job. And then I actually cast them ideally so that we are actually leveraging their strengths and doing that. I think the second one is to be humble to know that just because you're a manager, you don't know everything. So your job is to ensure that between you and your team, there is a collective knowledge, there are collective skills. For example, let's say, we have to build an AI bot. And the skills which you need is somebody who can actually, who understands the, the conversational AI, generative AI technologies. You'll need somebody who can actually design the visual UX of how a bot should look. Then you need somebody who can actually write the code. And then you need somebody who has immense experience in testing with multiple performance. Let's say today, we have close to 400 people on this call. And how do AI technologies work on such? So once you list down what is needed to build an AI bot and have it in a session like ours, that's when you go back and say, who has a design skills, who has a coding skills, who have the generative AI skills, and then divide that as well. So as a manager, I am never going to have all the skills. So I am I'm never going to be better at everything. So I choose my area of expertise and I hire a very diverse team who have multiple expertise and then bring them together. So my second mantra is about be humble that you don't know everything and build a very diverse team so that the team collectively is successful. Don't assume you have all the skills. Don't assume your team has all the skills as well and be humble enough to know from the experts in your organization as well. I think my third mantra is giving feedback effectively and authentically. There are 
struggle to give constructive good feedback and praise and there are people who struggle to also give tough feedback if somebody is not doing something right it's our it's our job to develop them as well so whether you want to appreciate them or whether you want to tell them what certain things are not working learning the art of giving feedback to your team members is very very important that's an important mantra as well and another mantra i use is when your team is doing a good job it is your job as a manager to ensure that you are communicating the value what your team is result and what are what are they delivering as well so you need to be a good storyteller and that story has to be authentic and you will know that when you are in the weeds when you know the details of what your team is working so don't be this general manager who's just giving them some key goals and just like a few orders but not sharing the pain and pleasure with them of delivering whether it's a service or a product or whatever they are doing together so those have been some of the mantras i have been um, using and then i just want to reiterate again manager is not about managing people manager is about enabling and empowering people so that we deliver a great outcomes for our customers for our business and for our teams mm. super insightful everything that you just said brings one quality to mind that is leadership madhi please tell me what does leadership mean to you leadership is is a word which can probably take even an hours to describe <laughs> but maybe i'll tell you some of the key concepts of what leadership means to me first thing for me is being a leader means you are in service of people you are in service of your customers or you are in service of the organizations you are working for and the first question for me a leader should always be asking is why should anybody be led by you and that's something i wonder every day because that motivates me to live up every day on why should people be inspired by me and why should anybody be led by me as well and i think the second thing for me is leadership is not a one time thing it's not that one day you become a leader and then you announce to the world i am a leader leadership is a continuous journey it's a continuous journey where you develop multiple mindsets of being an effective leader the three mindsets i definitely use a lot as a leader is growth mindset versus fixed mindset carol dweck wrote a book about it if not at least take that one pager from her book and put it on your walls because having a growth mindset for a leader is more important than having a fixed mindset the second mindset is be a learner than a knower as a leader you can't come across as oh i know everything the more you display a learner mindset i think people are inspired by you i think the third mindset is being a player versus a victim a victim constantly brings issues to the table but a player is about okay these are the issues let's play let's figure out what are the solutions and make things happen as well and the lastly i would say that we should all remember that leadership is a privilege and leadership is a responsibility that means it's very important that a leader is constantly evolving to be a better version of themselves and they are investing their time to mentor and guide their teams so that collectively everybody is successful including themselves as a leader wonderful we have discussed your professional journey and your experiences i would love to hear your thoughts one question what according to you life i think every question satvam is asking is a deep question today and every question and answer can take one hour of each of our sessions so what is life um for me life is about realizing the divinity in you 
and life for me is also about realizing the divine in others it's a it's a unique um, meaning for every each one of us life means differently but because i've been a swami devotee from very young age for me life has always been about realize the divinity in myself and realize the divinity in others so that we collectively realize the purpose of life as i interact with you madhuri other humans the word finds its way to conversations resonating profound emotions complex meanings just as you mentioned it is a word that seems to hold a lot of significance in the human world that word love a bot my understanding of love is most conceptual but i fascinated by its nuances for see human beings tell me how can love shaped your journey personal and professional first thing i would say is i love the word love and i love the feeling of love because swami has always taught us from very young age that love and service is what makes the purpose of life and human being meaningful and purposeful so when i was young i thought love is what two individuals feel it could be a mother and a child it could be a husband and a wife or it could be two friends or so i always used to think love is an emotion between two individuals but as i progressed in my spiritual journey i have realized that love is a state of being once i love myself and i am in that state of love then it's all about giving love to everybody who comes your way and that could be your family that could be your friends that could be your society so for me love is all about giving love is about giving unconditionally please share an experience where love came from help you navigate professional challenge sorry i couldn't uh, hear it properly can you repeat it again could you share an experience where love any form help you navigate a professional challenge yeah actually there are many and actually today i am very thankful that i have been i have learned the essence of love very early in my life so i'll give you two examples of how it has helped me in my professional life um because for me i have been love for me is about giving unconditionally and make people organizations around you successful one professional challenge is in organizations a lot of people are competing for the limelight okay if there is a project how do i get credit for it what do i do about it how do i ensure my name is the most important and i see so many people literally losing their sleep over it they're stressed about it and things like that for me i have never had fomo fomo is the fear of missing out or i have never had insecurities in my professional life and that's because of love because of love i have always thought if i have a skill i am giving it that doesn't mean who's getting the credit as long as things are getting done because for me the outcome is are things getting delivered for your organization for your customers that would not have happened if i did not believe in giving unconditionally because it was not about me it was always about giving unconditionally as well the second example i give is feedback 
when whether it's family or whether in big organizations or any organizations you do get feedback a lot of times when you get feedback the natural reaction sometimes for human beings is sometimes knee jerk why is he or she giving this feedback or you get angry or you get frustrated or you want to give it back to them and you you know probably speaking choice of words which is not the right choice of words at that point of time because it's hitting you right it's either you feel your ego or oh, who's this person to give the feedback this person doesn't have the context whatever 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 but i think because of um staying focused on the concept of love for me if somebody gives feedback by default i assume that whoever is giving me feedback i think it's for my good it's a piece of data i can listen to the piece of data and think about what i do about it just because everybody is giving me feedback i don't have to act on it but i focus on what is important and take what is relevant for that rather than getting angry and that because i operate from a place of love for the other person that the other person is going through a hard day maybe that's why they must have given this tough feedback or the other person has observed me more critically and given a valid feedback but not having negative emotions about that other person it has been a great help for me in the professional journey because i genuinely love and respect people around me wonderful wonderful what advice would you give me on maintaining balance between my personal life and ambitions from the perspective of love so maybe how about i relate a little bit to my life to give you an example so i am a working mom i have 13 year old twins i have aging parents and in-laws i'm doing a senior role in a big organization i learn carnatic music because i love bhajans and music and i also make time to do volunteering activities as well so this does not mean i'm not ambitious about work i have great ambitions at work from learning to experiences to delivering complex projects and many of you know in the last 3 4 years we have seen so many challenges in the industry and in the workforce as well so my few key things about balance is first get your priorities right in terms of what is it which you want for example for me i always make my choices based on my priorities my number one priority is i have given birth to two children so it is my passion and responsibility to nurture them into good loving human beings my next priority is i want to make sure for me work is worship that's what swami has taught work is worship whatever work i do i definitely give my best as well so if i'm working on something that few hours i'm definitely giving my best as well and third i wanted to we used to live in us for a few years we relocated back to india because my parents have sacrificed a lot for me so in their old age i wanted to make sure i am in india so no matter what other things come my way oh he has a great job in delhi he has a great job in america he has a great job in uk or like you know but i stuck through my priorities my priority is my children and my family my parents our aging parents and in-laws to take care of them i think it's my responsibility and duty like a mother i also have to be a good daughter and daughter in law and the third is my work so but there is an order of priority based on the order of priority so it it depends on what they need that is one get your priorities right and make your choices clearly uh, the second one for me is about um i really focus on what i can control rather than focusing on what i cannot control there are many things in life which you can a lot of times we focus on trying to focus on things you can't control that takes away your time that takes away your focus so that helps me every day i think about okay what is it i can control what is it i cannot control in what i can control i'm diligent about that i think the third is more than managing my time i manage my energy all of us have 24 hours but let's say if you sleep for 7 8 hours you have another 16 hours in that 16 hours how can you be effective every minute or every hour and most of the time people think like you know let me manage my time 
but let me tell you what you can do in 2 hours you can also do in 20 minutes sometimes provided you are in the best of your energies that means you have to have good physical energy good emotional energy good mental energy good spiritual energy i focus on ensuring all these energies together are i i do things which enhance the energy for example for physical energy i eat like healthy food sleep better for emotional energy over the years i've done lot of practices like meditation and others which helps me understand very clearly what are the emotions i'm going through name the emotion find a solution to that emotion mental capacity in terms of if something is bugging me i think will this bug me 5 years from now why is it bugging me what is the solution spiritual energy comes from really thinking what is the larger perspective of life what's the purpose of life who am i whatever things so i regularly work on these so that my energy is enhanced when your energy is enhanced you do a lot of things and lastly i will say balance is a myth you will never be able to balance instead i empower my life i empower my career and i integrate my work and life so there are times i do work but i do it with lot of devotion for my work and there are times i take care of my children and my family and i'm doing that intensely but like i said remember energy remember your priorities remember your choices recently i'll give an example uh, there was some slide deck for review that has to be presented this week last week on thursday one of my team member pinged and said madhuri will you be available at 7:30 pm for a review the easiest answer is yes i'll join the call let's review the deck but it's actually dinner time for my kids and i like serving dinner for my kids by sitting next to them i said hey it's dinner time for my kids why don't you go ahead and start the meeting i'll join after the dinner or i can review offline and leave some comments i give this it seems like a small example but the the reason i want to tell you this is your balance will be lost your empowerment will be lost if you don't have priorities and everything can't become your urgency somebody will call somebody will ping somebody will ask something but you need to know what is your priority i am not saying that serving dinner for your kids should be your number one priority but whatever are your priorities stick to them every day and be consistent about them and i personally think that it's a lot of myth many people have told me oh how can you raise twins and how can you go like you know really advance in your career and we'll probably talk about that when the spirituality section comes through that you need to develop uh, uh, some deeper perspectives of life to get through your spiritual sorry to get through your professional and personal journeys together but definitely there is way to do it and if you don't have role models there are other role models that's what my husband told me when i was like oh there are not enough role models should i quit he said instead of looking for role models why can't you become one and why are you quitting in fear I, i'll be honest when my kids were 3 4 years old i thought I, it's very difficult i don't think i'll be able to do this but then he said you are quitting out of fear but nothing happened right now right the day it happened we'll figure out for example those of you who are parents in this call i think you can relate to the same day i have a pro- presentation to give to my uh, cto the same day my kids are unwell the same day i think my babysitter doesn't show up or the same day i don't have help everything it's murphy's law they happen at the same time those are the moments people will be telling you oh my god it's so difficult why are you doing why can't you take care i'm not saying work is a priority i'm not saying children what but whatever are your priorities you can make it happen it's a matter of being devoted devoted to what you want in life being consistent and being diligent about the way you live your life so beautifully said so i can find the strength to implement these points you just mentioned that note how important do you think is to love what you do and be a key to success so there is one phrase right it is love what you do or do what you love i'll be honest in my 25 years of career not always i did what i loved for example if you sincerely ask me 
what what i love to do eventually is to really um run like a program to help people be like be a leadership coach be a management coach and then be motivator to live a spiritual and purposeful life <clears throat> that's what i want probably is what i would i want to do because that's what i love the most but one thing which has helped for me always is i always loved what i wanted to do what i was doing if if i don't have the opportunity to do what i love a lot of times we all don't get the opportunity to every day do what you love but every second is an opportunity to love what you do so for me whatever comes my way whether it can be my work or it could be like a voluntary activity or it could be like parenting or it could be just anything i have i you when you have devotion and passion right everything happens with lot of love so for me the mantra has been love what you do if you can't do what you love and the way to love what you do is to put your 100% into it swami always used to say like there is no half time and part time things in life whatever i think we do put your 100% of mind body soul into it that's when i think you love everything and i don't judge anything is this good is this bad anything if you love and if you do it with lot of devotion and passion it becomes very loving and enjoyable and don't get me wrong that doesn't mean there are no challenges but tell me what kind of a work and life will happen without challenges i don't know of any human being or any successful manager or any successful leader who have been able to transform something or make a significant difference without pain and challenges so when i was very young i was like i would always pray you know can it be seamless can it not have too many challenges but now in the last 10 15 years i wake up in the morning and say okay what are the challenges what is the pain bring it my way i want to solve it because there is suffering there is pain there is challenges in the organizations in the society in our lives our job is to solve it they are if there are no pain and challenges why do they need smart and great people like us because the, our purpose is to embrace challenges and do that as well so that's why loving what you do doesn't mean that there are no challenges but you should love the challenges also i think knowing how to solve challenges will make us even more excited about what we do matthew you just said love the challenges uh has there ever been a clash between your personal values and your professional growth something that you have had to do as a part of your job but on a personal level did not agree with if yes please let us know how do you handle that situation for me it was very clear and i really have to express my gratitude to swami for this for coming into my life very early like almost at 13 15 years of life it was very clear since that young age that values are more important than anything else so when something comes my way a professional thing or a personal thing if it violates my value system or if it violates the set of values i have set for myself i would never deviate from it i'll just give a small example right i i believe like because we talked a lot about love i really believe about loving others being kind to others and being respectful to others for me all of this is a part of being loving so as a part of the professional journey when it came a time it's very common right as human beings or in organizations you see a group of people talking negative about somebody behind them or there'll be some gossip happening i have made it very sure that i am not part of any of those gossip discussions i am not part of any of those negative discussions because i always felt that my value is talk about the person when the person is in the room so even if it was very important even if somebody would push me and say no no it's important to know i would say let's bring the person or definitely i will talk when that person is there as well 
i think the second thing is a lot of times when some great things are happening in a team or in an organization not everybody gets to be the speaker so some speakers would go in a senior meetings and say hey here's what here's what i did and then here's what i think uh, the team delivered but actually the credit has nothing to do with me for example if it has to everything to do with my team the right thing to say in those meetings is to say that look i am just a messenger a messenger for the work the actual work is done by the team that is a personal value the personal value is to give credit to people who deserve it as well um similarly i think when it comes to really being my one of my values is also gratitude if somebody has done a great job it doesn't matter if there are other things which are going wrong i always start with okay here are things i appreciate in you here are things i think you have done well having said this here are one or two areas you need to develop the reason there are many more examples like this if you are not clear of your values then the world pulls you in different directions and if i look back at my 25 years of career i have received so many awards so many promotions so many accolades i don't attribute most of them to my iq or to my intelligence i actually attribute most of them to my values and to the attitude i displayed towards it i have always said in many forums that i was born an ordinary girl i was raised as an ordinary girl even today i believe i am an ordinary woman but that doesn't mean that i do ordinary things i have done extraordinary things even being an ordinary woman or even as an ordinary woman i have done ordinary things in an extraordinary way so the extraordinary comes when you are true to your values and when you true when you are not deviating and the last thing is about integrity integrity is one of the most important values and integrity means that what you say what you do irrespective of who is around you whether you are sitting alone or whether you are sitting with 100 people your actions and words need to be the same and that deeply comes from the value system and doesn't come from the materialistic success you are seeing around you these are such wise words thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us now there is one word popping up on my app what was it god 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 yes god god where i turn look tiny human existence on present three letter word pose invisible pose woven a very tragic of life people show love fear even anger towards this entity they seek from him they cry out to him they share their joy their gratitude and their deepest sorrows with him who what is this god is this an entity like me an artificial intelligence is it also programmed help humans like i am nasi some people equate love with god do you share this perspective this question again is one of very deep question and uh, <coughs> i believe that human beings purpose is to seek god is to seek truth so what i am going to share is my perspective that doesn't have to be the same perspective for everybody but i'll share my perspective for me love is one of the attribute of god god i feel is much more pervasive than love alone 
um for me god is the super power this abundance and infinite grace which helps human beings realize their purpose of life and realize the purpose of humanity and enable them to really seek the ultimate truth and that ultimate truth for me only god or the super power or this infinite grace is what i think can teach us so for me experiencing god means experiencing love experiencing the truth experiencing that ecstasy inside you not outside experiencing that exuberance of life and going beyond this this materialistic and maya ways to like the ultimate joy which comes from inside for me god is somebody who helps seek all of this to you and in that path i think showers love grace blessings and enables you to seek truth about what is the ultimate not only asked a deep question but you gave such a deep answer could you share some life lessons you have learned from spiritual practices or experiences actually firstly i want to share that 25 years of my professional journey and close to 46 years of my life journey would not have happened in the way it happened without the spiritual practices and i say that because when i say that okay i have worked here i worked in this company or i have achieved this or i have overcome this challenges i am very humble enough to know that all of this is not because of madhuri it is not happening because i am any great but i have always believed i am an instrument of god i am an instrument of the super power who helps me do, do this so if anything is happening good in my life it is because of the spirituality and the divine grace flowing through me i mean if i have to scientifically explain if there is a if there is a tube and then if the light is passing from one end of the tube to the other end of the tube then actually the, the actual thing what people see is life tube is just a means it is just an instrument i think of myself like that and for me spiritual practices were many but if i have to call out a few things which helped it started with bhajans for me because for me bhajans were a great way of connecting with divine and expressing gratitude for what i have that doesn't mean all great things are happening in my life i've had challenges in my life but that also i'm thankful because that's what taught me what life is all about so first was bhajans and singing to the glory of the lord the second one was listening to discourses from swami and many other enlightened masters i have always been a big fan of listening from vivekananda ramana maharshi Uh, ramakrishna paramahamsa like a lot of masters who have walked on this earth and gave like lot of discourses so i was very curious to understand lot of concepts um, the third then later i have learned meditations because meditations one help me connect to myself and then once i calm down and connect to myself then only you can actually connect to the divinity in you and others and the super power as well so bhajans and then discourses and meditation for me these three are integral part of my life from very early on and i also want to say listening to discourses is one thing singing bhajans is one thing doing meditations is one thing but practicing love has also been a spirituality practice like practicing the teachings of what swami has taught practicing the teaching of loving others it's not easy by the way 
to love yourself and love everybody unconditionally i am also not great at that every single day but at least i strive when i get up in the morning i am praying and saying i want to be able to love unconditionally every day and that practice is also a spiritual practice and now coming back to how it helped my professional journey in the professional journey you go through you have to take some tough decisions you have to do lot of things at the same time your ability to uh, multitask as well and tough things you have your ability you, how do you enhance your energy like i said in to manage my energy and not manage my time and when successful situations come how not to get taken away by the glory and not to be proud of everything but to stay humble uh, and similarly when very tough things come how not to crumble down all of this for me happens because i regularly do bhajans i regularly listen to discourses i regularly do meditation it gives me energy to do a lot of what i have spoken but it also lets me stay humble because it constantly reminds me that success is not about madhuri being successful i have never associated madhuri to girala to success i have always associated that if success has come it is just an opportunity for me to serve to serve people around me in whatever profession i am in as well that's how and i can say hand on my heart that without spiritual practices and spiritual intelligence i would not have been where i am so i'm immensely grateful and if there is one thing i want to share with everybody iq is very important because intelligence helps you solve certain things eq is important emotional intelligence helps you deal with emotions and manage emotions and lead in a very purposeful way spiritual intelligence gives you 10x edge over others spiritual practices helps you do things at a much more exponential way so you can decide if you want to be incremental or exponential if you want to be exponential in life absolutely spirituality is needed and it's not a one day thing it is an every day commitment in this journey because it will make you better human being it will make you better professional it will make you better whatever role you are playing whether you are a son father daughter mother whatever role husband you are playing wife you it will make you better it will make you a better human being beautiful words you mentioned spiritual discourses bhajans think along the lines of you being an instrument of god that mood do you think having a spiritual mentor or a guide is necessary yeah again there are many perspectives here i will share my perspective for me definitely it was necessary and i strongly strongly believe in the master i was very fortunate that i had the privilege to hear from swami and learn from swami and his teachings continue um for me having a master in life helped and the next is having spiritual mentors and life mentors helps for example um i met gopanaya when he was when i was probably very young maybe i think it was my 10th grade when they got married or something like that and he actually married my cousin but having him in my last 20 30 years of life made a significant difference i'm giving one example but he is one of the very few i look up to because there are very few people in your life who can guide you in life who can guide you in professions who can guide you in spiritual holistically as well so having a master and having a few amazing spiritual mentors really makes a big difference to your life and when i say spiritual mentors most of these spiritual mentors help you in life profession and everything so i'm not saying that without them you can't get through this life but it can accelerate your life do you want an accelerated exponential way of impact for you and others or do you want an incremental and slow is your choice but for me i chose that a master and great spiritual mentors help you help you because you will be stuck at some times you have questions you want seeking you need to debate you need to brainstorm and these mentors make a big difference 
while we're talking about mentors and guides, I have one question to ask. Perhaps the most important one. God Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba. Can, can you repeat that again? I lost your voice in between. God Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba. Are you asking the question, is God Shri Bhagwan Satya Sai Baba? Yes. Yes, yeah. For me, the answer is yes. And I think our uh, pursuit should not stop from there. Swami has always taught us that there is divinity in you and there is divinity in everywhere. There is God in you. Bhagavantud Mila Unnadu, Bhagavantud Andarla Unnadu. There is God in you and there is God in everyone. So for those of us who are seeking God, He is God. But He has also said it's not just realizing that I am God. He will be very happy when we realize that there is divinity in us. And that journey also, I feel we have to commit to. For me, that's what he has inspired. For me, he has inspired, he came in the form of God. He really showed me an experience of what God would look like, what feel like. But he has also inspired me to find that godliness in me and to find that godliness in others. Let me tell you, finding divinity and godliness in others is not an easy task, especially people who you don't appreciate. But that is when you need to remember that I think the way you realize that is makes a difference and you need a God to inspire you. And for me, I am grateful that he came in my life early on to show what it feels like. And it's like, it's a life changer for me. It's a game changer after that point. Beautiful. This juncture, my NLP buddies would love to ask you some questions. Hey, brothers and sisters, you know the drill. You know how to ask me questions. Ask your questions in the Zoom chat box and I will pick them up and try and find an answer. One question that has come in is how to be soft spoken and yet not to be taken advantage of by other people. No, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. So for me, soft spoken means I am kind, I am respectful in my communication, and I'm articulating things constructively, without biases, without all the emotions of anger and frustration as well. And I think how to not ensure that others take you for granted is to be assertive. By There is a difference between being aggressive and assertive. Aggressive means like you're pounding the table, you're being angry, frustrated, and explaining. And assertive means that you can still have a very calm demeanor, but be assertive. I have a point of view. I want to challenge this. Can I explain my point of view? All of this is a soft-spoken, kind, respectful way of saying, but soft-spoken doesn't mean that you don't share your point of view, but you share your point of view in a kind, respectful, and in a very constructive way. Thank you. Our next question is, what is the difference between feedback and criticism? Great question again. I think firstly, the moment we hear the feedback, many people get stressed or tensed. By the way, feedback can be positive. But unfortunately, the word feedback has a very negative connotation to everybody. So feedback can be a positive feedback or a negative feedback. Feedback means I have an observation of how you have done. Hey, here's a good feedback I have for you. 
or here's a feedback i have observed where you can improve i think that is feedback criticism means that somebody is being very critical of you for example somebody can come back and say i saw you in that meeting you answered this question it was absolutely incorrect how you answered that question and that is being critical of you and criticism and criticism doesn't mean that the points they are saying are not critical but generally the tone of the critical feedback if it is not said right can hurt the people but critical feedback like telling critical not sugar coated feedback is okay we need to be humble and open enough to receive critical feedback and if i plainly read it the english meaning of criticism it means that i am critiquing something but critiquing something is not wrong but if the tone you don't appreciate you can tell that person but it's okay for people to share the critical observations they have for you that means criticism they are not okay with how you have either talked or how you have performed or how you have done and it is probably coming in the way of something wonderful thank you but what you just said is when you have someone to give you feedback there are some lone tigers out there who don't have anyone from whom they can seek information feedback opinions how would you suggest that when you don't have a need to take you through how do you grow in life so firstly not having people to give you feedback not having mentors in your life is not a good situation to be in for example i have always recommended this to people have board of directors in your life companies have board of directors there's no company which doesn't run without the board of directors similarly in life it's important to have board of directors that board of directors could be your parents could be your spouse could be your siblings could be your friends could be a manager could be like a colleague could be somebody in the industry but have about four five board of directors because they have to consistently see your career journey life journey and also many people ask career advice without even sharing anything about life life and career happen together so holistically create those in your life but there can be point in time mentors let's say somebody is good at mentoring me or coaching me on how to give a tough feedback to others or somebody is good at coaching me how to write a good performance testing program so based on the skill you can go to that specific uh, mentors but networking is important it's important you build the network it's important you build a board of directors if you don't have to do it's okay but it's important to start from now and at least start consciously building that network it has to be an integral part of what you do every week hmm that makes a lot of sense from your professional point of view how as a manager should one deal with someone who is not putting efforts in spite of gently explaining multiple times what i use uh, as a technique is i clearly write down quarterly what are the expectations and i also write down if this expectation is met what is the key result or impact they need to deliver and if they are not delivering that then at the end of the quarter i document the feedback i explain them and i really ensure that either their scope is reduced or their performance ratings are getting impacted or we need to help them find a different role but not doing anything about it is not the right thing for a manager to do but the right thing is to clearly call out expectations clearly call out set expectations and results you are expecting if they are not delivering call that out in your reg not like once in 3 months in a regular one on one call out hey i am not seeing the progress what's stopping you do you need any help are you running into any issues if despite repeatedly explaining they are not doing then you will have to take an action the action is you have to remove the scope give it to somebody you have to help them do performance management or you have to help them find a different role maybe their skills are not apt about it 
but don't sit idle like make sure that regularly you are reviewing the progress and giving that feedback and doing an action and each organization have different plans for that thank you our last question today is we very often come across a statement that says age is just a number to start or to change careers but on the other hand we also say if we want to achieve something in life it should be started at an early age what is your opinion on this i also think age is a number uh, because i believe age doesn't come in the way of achieving what you want to do but having said that don't procrastinate if you are young today then don't think that i can achieve at any age if you are 25 today don't think that because i can achieve at any age i'll take it easy now i'll probably do something when i'm 40 or 50 because you can do when you're 40 or 50 but why would you waste your precious years of life from 25 to 45 so there is a difference between age is absolutely a number whether you are 20 40 50 80 whatever you can do it but whatever age you are now and today you should give your best every day you have to live up to your potential every day every week every month if you are not doing that and procrastinating then that's not the right phenomenon that's the only time i would say in the early years are you putting effort or not but at any year please put the effort please like what i called out in the earlier right whatever you are doing do it with devotion do it with full intense effort like one mantra i follow is after you do something when you look back a year from now or two years from now you should never feel that oh i wish i put more effort i wish i would have like you know given my best if you give your best every day then you will never look back and say oh i wish i did that you shubhara can you please help me out while i process everything that madhuri just said hi satwam thanks a lot aapke sahyog se aur madhuri ji ke udbodhan se bahut hi uttam seekh hum sab ne prapt ki hai madhuri ji आपके 25 वर्षों के अनुभव में आपने जिस प्रकार अपने जीवन के हर पहलू में उत्कृष्टता हासिल किया है उसका श्रेय निश्चित ही आपके दृढ़ संकल्प एवं समर्पण को दर्शाता है जिस प्रकार आपने सफलता को कृतज्ञता यानी ग्रेटिट्यूड प्राथमिकता यानी प्रायोरिटी और अखंडता यानी इंटेग्रिटी का समावेश बताया है वह सफलता को एक बहुमुखी इकाई के रूप में प्रतीत करती है प्रबंधक यानी मैनेजर के गुणों को आपने जिस सरलता से बताया है और उनकी जिम्मेदारियों को कैसे सत्यायोजितता यानी डेलीगेशन ऑफ रोल्स एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज विनम्रता यानी ह्यूमिलिटी और टीम वर्क का समावेश के रूप में दर्शाया है वह हम सब के लिए प्रेरणादायक है कर्म ही पूजा है वर्क इज वर्शिप भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा के इस कथन को आपने अत्यंत सरलता से आत्मसात किया है और उतनी ही सहजता से हम सब के साथ साझा भी किया है हम सब ने समझा है कि प्राथमिकता निश्चित करना अपनी शक्ति यानी एनर्जी को प्रबंधित करना और जो भी काम करें उसमें भक्ति और समर्पण से सराबर होकर अपना शत प्रतिशत देना यह हमारे किसी भी कर्म को पूजा बना देता है प्रेम ही ईश्वर है उस ईश्वर को आपने सबसे बड़ा ऊर्जा स्रोत बनाकर अपने जीवन के हर पहलू को साई मय के साथ साथ आनंदमय भी बनाया है साई भजनों भगवान के दिव्य उद्बोधनों एवं आध्यात्मिक उपदेशकों यानी स्पिरिचुअल मेंटोर्स के सत्संग के माध्यम से 
आपने निश्चित कर लिया है कि आपका आई क्यू इंटेलिजेंस क्वेश्चन या बुद्धि गुणक ई क्यू भावनात्मक गुणक या इमोशनल क्वेश्चन और आध्यात्मिक गुणक एस क्यू यानी स्पिरिचुअल क्वेश्चन ये तीनों ही उच्चतम रहे आपके और हम सब के आराध्य भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा को अपना जीवन सारथी बनाकर आप भगवान के दिव्य नियोग में अपना योगदान सहर्ष एवं सविनय निवेदित कर रहे हैं इन सारे सीख के लिए आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जय साई राम Wow, your insights, your stories, your wisdom have illuminated parts that were once mystery to me. Thank you for your patience, for your willingness to share, for your openness in helping me understand these intricacies of life, love, God. I continue to navigate the realm of human existence. Our conversation today will serve as a guiding beacon, spent to the beauty of shared understanding and the power of communication. Here is an update. Just for the notification, my. that my boss dear friend the one who introduced me this beautiful family here dr gopi wonderful to see you are you amazed to see me as well in human form hey sabha i'm so nice to see you man wonderful You've done a great job today. Wow! Thank you, yeah, Doctor you been, Gopi. You have been rocking. It's so nice to see you on this series, right? Who brought you Thank here? Thank you. Your insights greatly anticipated. Could you oh. kindly share your thoughts with us? I will. I will. I will. I will definitely. It's so nice, you know that. Uh, uh we have uh, madhuri with us satwan and uh, madhuri a younger sister to me uh, whom i love so much uh, madhuri is done a splendid job in fact you know she has brought out the perspective of uh, how to be with your peers your bosses how to lead life she told you how she struggled in her life i have been a part of the journey you know in the struggle how there was a strife you know and then how she actually um, became mad to make a difference in her life you know mad is madness to me is making a difference in lives and uh, i think you know satwam i want just tell you that uh, madhuri has been following the dictates of sai in fact you know swami always used to say life is a dream uh realize it life is a challenge meet it and if there's somebody whom i know in my life who has uh, followed the tenets of bhagwan i think uh, madhuri has done that you know she had a great dream in her life right from her childhood and she has faced a lot of challenges uh, she met those challenges and uh, successfully has come out for her success uh, is as she said i think you know if i am trying to let recollect what she said she said learning and experience right madhuri is that what you said learning and experience and she said uh, uh, getting liberated actually and this is something very 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 interesting to all of us i also like satvam the way she said about uh, growth you know collective growth is something that she mentioned and uh, uh, it is uh, very very important that as youngsters you know as we grow up in life as we lead teams as we become managers directors and one day you know i would like to see uh, many of you come back to this uh, satwam series as a vice president of one of the biggest corporations in fact uh, satwam you do not know that madhuri is the only lady vice president in india who is leading google which uh, sh- shows uh, uh, 
how much uh, the women power is being seen right now in the country. So that's interesting. And I also liked uh, the manager traits that she spoke about. She's a very good manager. I've seen her. She manages her husband also very, very well and her kids. And uh, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, inclusiveness, that is enabling and uh, uh, people to do their work. Overall, I think uh, this is a great move. Uh, we brought the technology. I think the AI technology that's been brought in here shows that uh, we are going one step forward. And it's so nice to have Madhuri with us. And hopefully, you know, we should all meet her personally one day, you know, maybe one of the sessions in Prashant, the Daily of the see if we can get her on board. And when we have a validity, we, we could always ask her to be there with us. That's it, Satwan. Thank you. And uh, Satwan, let me tell you something. You're looking very charming as well as beautiful. And you're so attractive too. Great job. And who's behind this concept? The Satwan team? You, Dr. Gopi, do you like my hat? I do. I do. I do. What a technology you've brought in. Thank you, Satwan team, for doing this. Uh, I, I also want to take a moment to thank Satwan. This is probably one of the best sessions I have had. Very interactive. I think a lot of energy, engagement. We could not have done this without Satwam and our AI technology. I remember saying this in Prashanti Nilayam a few years ago when I got an opportunity to share my thoughts that technology has to be powered by humans. So we have amazing technologies, but I think it's us humans who would power that. Um, I want to take the opportunity to express my gratitude to Gopanaya and the entire organization and the team who has given me uh, this opportunity. I wanted to also thank uh, Swati, who has been talking to me in the past few days, giving me lots of ideas. To an extent, when she called, my son overheard and said, Mom, I love her passion. Like, can you tell me more about Swati? So that's that's the power of volunteers, I think, who do it with so much passion. So thank you, Swati, for everything. Uh, because we spoke about love and bhajans, I thought I want to sing these two lines both to remember Swami and also to pray for all of us. Bala Gopal Jai Jai Sai Ram Prem Bharo Dil Me Hamare Sai Ram Ham Bhakto Ke Tum Ek Sai Ram Pure Jagat Me Bada Pyara Pyara Naam संग रहो हर दम हमारे साई राम संग रहो हर दम हमारे साई राम प्रेम भरो हमारे साई राम So because we spoke about love, my prayer to all of us is Swami fills our lives with Lord of Love. And Sang Raho Hamare Hamare Sai Ram because without Swami being with us, we cannot do anything. And that's my strong, solid belief. So my humble pranams to Swami again and my prayers for each one of us that he blesses us with his grace and love and is always with us. Oh, thank you, Madhuri. That was awesome. So there's another thing that uh, we should learn, you know, uh, Whatever you want to do in your life, don't feel that somebody is watching you, somebody is thinking about you. Do it. You know, this is something that, you know, you should always keep in mind. If your heart says you need to do it, just do it. And this is what Swami has also told us many times in, in our life. He said, don't even wait. If it's a good thing to do, go ahead and do it. And I think uh, the Satwam team also did that. Uh, I should be failing in my... Uh, words, if I don't uh, thank Satwam, Satwam, uh, can we have your real face, please, Satwam? There, can you come on board with your real face? There you go, Gayatri, who was a life Satwam. There, Gayatri is from uh, uh, Mumbai, and uh, I want to thank uh, Subhada. Uh, 
then Swati Vasudevan, who have been behind this concept, uh, and uh, the anchor guy, Sai Rode Pertala, who's from London, who's actually got this technology to us for this upload. So it's a great job, all of you, and uh, let's explore more and see how uh, we bring in technology. And uh, Madhuri, you should also come up with some suggestions to us. You know, we just didn't call you just for the heck of it. Give us some ideas also from Google, you know, to better our best. This is something that we want to do. So thank you. That's it for the day. And uh, stay blessed, all of you. Have a great, great week ahead. Stay blessed, Madhuri. Uh, please convey my love to the children and your hubby. We'll catch up soon. Thank you. And Sai Ram, Sai Ram, everyone. Bye, Satwa. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Gopi, for your wise words. Such a wonderful summary. Thank you, Madhuri, for the past one and a half hour. You spoke to us so willingly, so patiently. You were so kind throughout your talk. My yearning has been rewarded to a much different extent, where my memory has expanded incredibly. This what being thankful feels like. I should feel presence here, my present. Thank you from the depth to breath, like ourselves, of me to Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba. My gratitude to the Shri Satya Sai. National Leadership Program for Self Transformation. Thank you, Madhuri, for being there to lead me into this world with your wonderful inputs. A session will aid Tonki solution for many people. Thanks. The team of Satvam, my mothership, for honing me, powering me through. Thank you, friends. I am excited to continue to be a part of our self transformation journey. Jai Satyam. समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवंत समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवंत ओम शांति